Hey, real quick before we start the show, we recently jumped into the top 100 in the entrepreneurship category in Apple Podcasts. We recently also passed 24,000 listens, and yet we only have 24 reviews. Uh, more reviews would get us higher up in the rankings, and the only one that can do that is you listening to this. So if you could just take one minute and go leave a review on Apple, Spotify, wherever you are, it really, really does help the show, and I can't thank you enough. Hopefully we're giving you so much value, you'll happily take a minute here and just go rate and review the show. We appreciate it very, very much. Welcome to the Dropship Podcast, where you'll learn how to build and grow a high-ticket dropshipping business and hear stories from successful e-commerce entrepreneurs. Let's kick this thing off. Hey, hey, welcome to the Dropship Podcast. Today, we've got another special episode that we pulled from one of our Patreon episodes. So we get asked a lot, John, Ben, can you guys talk about partnerships and so we did a very long episode on Patreon about it, but I wanted to take part of that and play it here to give you an idea of, number one, how do we think about partnerships? But number two, what does Patreon actually look like? So I took the first 20 minutes of a recent episode we did. We'll play it on here. If you want to hear the rest of the episode, you can hear it absolutely free at patreon.com slash dropship podcast. All back episodes are absolutely free. And when John and I put out a new episode, which is about every other week at this point, sometimes a little slower, you only get charged when we put out a new episode and it's just $5 per episode. So if you like what you're listening to here, you can get way more of it on Patreon and you'll get all the back episodes for free, plenty to binge upon over there. So we'd love for you to check it out, but enjoy this, uh, this 20 minutes or so from a Patreon episode about partnerships. Patreon, we're back. John and I are getting really fucking lazy with these. Apologies. More so like John Summer's ending. So now he's like, all right, we're you know, cooling down. I want to work harder. And now Ben Summer's about to begin and I want to go golfing. You know, it doesn't look like summer outside yet, but it's coming. I promise. And so uh, we need to get better at this. So thanks for bearing with us. Uh, a whole lot of back episodes. If you joined us recently, I hope you've been binging all of those for absolutely free. And, uh, you know, John and I, I think what you know, every other week I think would be a good cadence to have over here. Just a, a place for us to go deeper. And you'll find that today where, you know, we're likely going to tell some stories about partnerships here that are something I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily share on a public feed. And so, yeah, I like this intimate setting, but we got to be better at this for sure. Yeah, totally. Totally. Let's, let's get into it. Partnerships. My favorite part of this is, uh, I do a whole lot less editing on the Patreon. It saves me a whole lot of time. And so I miss doing these. I can pump them out a lot quicker. And, and I do, I, I like the storytelling of this, which again, you're going to hear today. And I, I can't wait to jump in today. It's all about partnerships today. I've been in some good ones. I've been in some horrible ones and I'm currently in a good one. John and I are in a partnership and I think we're happy for the most part. And so what are you doing? Kissing at you, baby. You're kissing at me. Oh, nice. Oh Just. yeah. <laughs> Maybe we need to add video to this. <laughs> I think there's a lot of pieces to partnerships. We get asked a lot. Tell some of the stuff you were just saying before the call, John, of, of things people have asked you about partners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, I think it comes up for a lot of people and that's kind of the driving uh, force for this episode. You know, people in this group who, who are subscribed to this podcast, people in Dropship Breakthrough, just other random people that we come across. A lot of people are asking you know, should I be in a partnership? How do I find a business partner? I even had one guy ask me recently, is there a marketplace for business partners like like a, a Fiverr or, or some kind of, you know, place you can just go on and find a business partner online? And, you know, which I thought was a fairly unique question. But I guess it's... it. And opportunities come up. I mean, a lot of people have been in the in the in the in the high ticket dropshipping space for a while. They've met other high ticket dropshippers, met people that they share interests with or share thinking, similar thinking with, and you know they get along well with. And you know it ends up coming up. Well, should we do a business together? Like how did? And then that leads to how does that work? What should I be? How should I set that up? How you know what to watch out for? So there's a whole series of questions, and partnerships can be fantastic. Like they can be really great. Some of the best businesses I've seen in high ticket dropshipping space have been, you know, run via a partnership of of two two or more like minded people, and they've, that's turned out to be a fantastic arrangement, and no doubt was a contributor to that business's success. 
But on the same token, I think both Ben and I would probably looking at our numbers would say, you know, we've had more partnerships that didn't work out great than did work out great, I think. And so we've, we've got some good learning here for things to, to do, things to watch out for. And that's, that's uh, what we want to share with you today. So if you're in that space and you're thinking about it or you're going down that path already, you can maybe avoid some potential pitfalls here. Yeah, we added some questions like, first up, why would you partner? And I really hope throughout each of these sections, we can add personal stories. I know I have them on all of these on like why I made the decisions I made, which decisions looking in reverse, I wish I didn't make kind of thing. And so I'll, look, I'll start right off the top. Why would you partner? Ask yourself that question deeply. I think in the very beginning, I wanted to partner because I was scared. I, I didn't think I knew enough. I didn't think I was good enough. I didn't think I was smart enough. And if I just went on this ride with somebody else, then if it didn't work, I could blame them or I, or they may fill some gap that I don't have. And in reality, no one knows what the fuck they're doing. No one, literally no one. I know you're listening to this right now and you're like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing either. We're all just winging this over time. You gain experience and you gain lessons in life that'll help you make better decisions, but we're all just, we're flying by the seat of our pants. And so uh, I think early on in the beginning to answer the question, why would you partner? I was, it was my own BS. I was getting in my own way. I was trying to find somebody to basically rescue me and take me where I needed to go. And every time I would think of a new business idea, my first thought would be, who can I do this with? Who who might have a little more experience than me that I can partner with? And, and that's just not the right way to think about this. But at the same point, why would you partner? Because some of those reasons might be valid, right? Once you understand what you're good at, like as you go through like in the beginning, I think you should do everything in your business to understand what you're good at. And eventually you'll understand what you're going to, you might not like see it right away, but you'll start when somebody asks you how to do something and you explain it and 10 people in a row, give you a look like what? And it's just super easy for you. That's your zone of genius. And that might be in Google ads. That might be in SEO. That might be in remarketing. That might be in building customer journeys. That might be in sales. That might be in customer service. There there's many places you could be really, really great at. For me, it took a long time to realize that I, I'm pretty good at making it rain. I see everything through a keyword lens. I'm very good on the Google side of things, but I, I have my own blind spots. And so knowing what those blind spots are, knowing what your queen bee role is, I believe is, uh, I can't remember the author's name from clockwork puts it, knowing what that is for you and finding somebody else to fill in those gaps for you as a partner can be very, very beneficial. That is one reason why you would partner. John, do you have any other reasons why you might partner with? No, I mean, I think that for, from my perspective, that encapsulates it pretty well. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think it, in some ways it's easy to think of reasons why you, you know, reasons that are not good reasons to partner with somebody, which people do come up with. But yeah, I think for me these days, I mean, I think about it in terms of, you know, I, I would partner, there's somebody I know already, and, you know, we'll get to some of the keys of what makes it work. That's one of them, you know, that I know can bring value to a business that I can't bring. That right? is different. Like, so, I I don't go into a business with the notion that this needs to be a partnership business and I need to go out and find a business partner, right? I I think that's the wrong wrong way of going about it. And I hear that a lot. People are like, I want to start a business and I want to find a business partner before I've even started it. I want to be clear and say, you don't need a partnership. (laughs) Like we say, why, why, why would you have a partnership? Well, it's not necessary. It's never necessary. Yes, they can be great, but I don't think personally... Um, you should be like starting a business with the notion that the only way this is going to work for me is if I'm in a partnership and I then need to go and manufacture a partnership with somebody who I probably don't really know that well. I think that's what I've seen people do. And like I I went into that, one of the early ones on high ticket dropshipping ones that I tried, it was kind of like that. That's the way I approached it. And I ended up starting a business with somebody who I really didn't know and you know, it didn't make it very far. And more, more so for that reason. Like I just, my mindset of uh, the reasoning behind being in a partnership. So I thought it would make things easier just by virtue of there being two people in the business. Sure, it's going to make things easier. Isn't it going to mean I just have to do less work? <laughs> and uh, which, yeah, in some ways maybe, but that shouldn't be the driving force for why you why you enter into a partnership or why you're even thinking about it, I don't think. I think loneliness probably plays a role here too. Like this journey's fucking mm-hmm. lonely, man. There's yeah. I live in a town of I don't know, six, seven thousand people. There's no one here that does what I does. 
there's nobody within 25, 30 miles. Like I have to go into Minneapolis, St. Paul to find people who do what I do. And if you're not in a big city, you're – you're lonely. Even if you are in a big city, if you're not going to meetups to find the, you know, 27 other people in your city that do what you do, like this is a very lonely game. And so I can understand just us as humans who are, who are seeking community, who are seeking a tribe that you want to find that in your business as well. And so I guess that could be a reason, but for me, like just looking back, so John and I wrote out all of our partnerships. I've got quite a few on my list here and looking back at all of them, like the reason I partnered or like, what, like, finding the right person to partner with me to fill in my gaps, like John said, or, or bring value to the business are the ones that have been most successful. So how do you pick the right person? For me, it's skills. Are they bringing something to the table that you fundamentally don't bring to the table? Can they bring value to your business in a way that you can't bring value to business? So I'll give you an example on my pet health business. I had hired a writer who was very, very good at writing. Her name's Leanna. She runs punchlinecopy.com. I really liked the way she wrote I can think things through in my head. I can tell you when it looks good, but I have a very hard time getting it out personally and writing it out. She's very, very good at that. And she came in, brought her voice to the table. I think she's hilarious anyway. And so I was like, this is great. Can I stop paying you and just give you equity and you be, you come on and own this brand with me? And same with Layton, my other business partner. He wanted to, he's got a design background. He runs an agency, Envision.io, and he wanted to come in and really help us on the design side of things and move into operations, which is something, again, I very much enjoy focusing on making it rain and bringing in the right people and designing customer journeys. And so this is my way of finding people to fill in gaps that I had, and I'm still doing that. I'm Currently, according a mentor, someone who's exited for $50 million plus, somebody who's been through this journey to come in and really help me cover my blind spots because I don't I don't know what I'm doing. I've never been to $50 million before. What does that look like? What are the legal structures I'm going to need to make sure I have in place? What does it look like to be in the right position to sell to PE and, and different things like that? And so like, there's always room to bring in people who can cover your blind spots. And I, I would say that's the number one reason how what I would look for in the right person, but there's definitely more to it than John, than that. John, I, I personally having the, having someone who's a equal cultural fit to yourself, I think is imperative here. Like you have to look at this, like a marriage, you are signing a legally binding contract, just like you are in a marriage and you're get, you, you, you own part of a business. That person either fits your values or they don't like, there's no in between. There's no gray area. And I, I would encourage you to find somebody who shares values with you so that, you always are on the same page. Like it's very easy to not be on the same page with someone. And, and you know, I don't know what the divorce rate is in Australia, but the divorce rate's not good here in America. It's like, it's 60% or something like that. Right. I think uh, too many people are getting that wrong and they're probably getting this wrong in their business as well. And so can't, I, I don't know how to word that if it's cultural fit or whatever it is, but find somebody you actually, you share values with. What do, what do you look for when you're looking to partner with somebody? John, why don't you tell everyone why you chose my beautiful mug to partner with? What what did you see in me? <laughs> well, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, we're, we're partnered on Dropship Breakthrough, and we, we actually were partners in the past. We can probably talk about with three people, not just not just me and Ben. And that one actually kind of fell apart, you know, in, in various ways. But look, I mean, in our case particularly, I think it's important to say, I mean, on, on this business and this podcast and all that sort of stuff. I mean, we, we started doing that last year, right? So 2021, we've known each other since 2016 or even even a bit before we knew each other online, but we we, we first met face-to-face in, in 2016. So we've known each other for a really long time. You know, before we started doing the podcasting stuff, we were talking every week for, you know, quite a while there since early 2020 or 2019 or COVID or something like that. I can't remember when we started doing that. but And so... Like I is two things for me. One, I we knew it had known each other for so long, and obviously we clicked on a personal level. Like we would be buddies anyway, even if we weren't in business together, right? Because we were just hanging out and talking, which is kind of where this podcast came from. This long form podcast we started off saying, "Well, let's just record our conversations where we're talking about business and stuff," right? So and so here we are, and we're still doing that. But so it was quite clear that just that sort of, as you say, cultural, but like it, it's a good question. Like, could you actually just have a friendship with this person in, in regular life? Even if you're like, we, we were into the same music, you know, blah, blah, blah. Lots of similarities Dread there. Lives. And 
the dreadlocks. We both had dreadlocks and we went through, you know, the same sort of, uh, a lot of the same sort of things early on in our life, uh, even though we didn't know each other then, but there's a lot of relatability there uh, and things like that. So that there's, there's that level of chemistry there that you can kind of relate to a successful relationship, uh, romantic relationship, although this is clearly not romantic, even though I'm kissing the mic at you, but uh you know, I think that that's a big part of it, was a big part of it for me. And certainly something from my earlier efforts at partnerships that did not exist. And that was like the very first one I ever tried. I, think I worked out after a little while that I actually really disliked the guy. I just thought he was a dick in general, right? And, and that <laughs> I walked away from that one just because I couldn't literally stand talking to the guy. I mean, you're in a partnership. You're going to talk to that other person a lot, right? You're just going to shoot shit with them as well as talking about business. And so if it's not somebody you can get on with in general, I don't think your partnership's going to go far. So for me and you, that was a big thing. But also, I mean, on top of that, you have some experience, some skills, some knowledge that I don't have. Like from a bit from the business perspective of dropship breakthrough in our podcasting, you're an experienced podcast. I wanted to do podcasting. I didn't have enough time to manage that by myself as well as all the other things we manage. You know what you're doing there, editing podcasts and all that. So as an example, that was a skill that you could bring in that I don't have, right? Or I, and, and I didn't want to learn, right, to be honest. But also, you know, I mean, in terms of, you know, our content for our program, I mean, you've done a lot of things to focus on some things, you know, particularly in the SEO space and that sort of thing that I haven't put as much focus into. And you have a unique take on those things that you can add to the business that I can't add. So Rather than saying we're both going to come in and focus on Google ads, which we clearly both know really well, for me, it was more about, I know Ben's got a range of experiences that are a bit different to mine. He's going to bring some unique insight in, some unique knowledge um, and skills. And that's that was the point for me. And yes, it also does allow us to get more done at the same time, you know, which, which is also, there are a number of things we want to do. And so for me, doing it all of that by myself, you know, I knew I had to have somebody else helping me to do that because I just couldn't do it all myself. But for me, that wasn't the primary driver as such. Like I say, I don't think just getting work off your plate should be the primary driver of a partnership. I think that's the wrong way to look at it because if you if you go at it with that as your number one priority, I want to bring on a partner just so I have to do less, then what you fall into the trap of doing is finding the wrong partner, like somebody you don't get along with. You'll just go for the first person who comes across your plate and says yes. Right. And that may not be the right person for you to be in that sort of relationship with. Yeah. I think for, for me, looking at you, it, you know, a lot of it's what I just said values, right? I, my values are empathy, kindness, thoughtfulness. Like you, you embody those, right? Like a lot of times, business ships aren't all they're cracked up to be a lot of times summer happens in australia and john wants to go fuck off or i you know summertime happens here and i want to play golf and watch the twins and like i've got a you know a kid under one here as well i want to spend time with john's got 97 kids i think at this point and so like you have to have empathy with that person to understand they have a life and they have things going on and you have to work together and so just knowing John the way I knew him, we talked for, again, multiple years. I think in the beginning of COVID, we just said, hey, you want to chat every week on Fridays at at whatever, three o'clock and your Saturday. And we started talking for John, you know, was courting me on this business for a while. And we shared values. And then once we realized that we also shared a vision of how we could change a lot of people's lives if we did this course the way it needed to be done, right? We both came from dropship lifestyle. We knew if we were going to do this, this needed to be something different. This needed to be something better. And so when John came with that vision of like, here, we can create this as well as, Hey, Ben, you bring podcasting and some, you have some relationships that you bring to the table. And I bring like, stuff to the table that Ben doesn't want to do, like answer the phone and like do sales and, and, you know, handle a lot of the back end stuff. It was just, it, it kind of made sense that we're, we're a couple puzzle pieces that work together. And I think we saw that earlier, like you said, you know, not to jump into horror stories here, but you know, you and I were partners with another gentleman trying to do this course thing at one time. And I specifically remember I'm driving from where I live to Milwaukee to meet with the partners in that biggest business I was part of. And the whole drive, it's like a four hour drive here. Nearly that whole drive is us discussing where we should go. And really it was just me sitting silently with John and, and this gentleman yelling back and forth in my vehicle. And so it, it, while it made the drive pretty short, it was, it was the end. And, and I think we all saw that that day too, that it was, there was just too many people involved who had different ideas on where we should go. We didn't share a vision. We didn't share, you know, we shared some values, but I don't think we shared all values. And, and I don't think we had a real roadmap that we all agreed upon. And so that, that can be difficult. And, you know, I would say that was the least of my horror stories that I have for sure. 
Yeah, sure. And and you're absolutely right. I mean, that one felt did did I think fall apart because you know just a, a fundamental difference of views on how the business should grow or or what what should be done to make that business grow, and there was no way that there was a, a common you know thoughts there. And so, yeah, at that point, it was just easy to start going separate ways. And uh, I mean, that's what happened and probably probably for the, you know, a good decision too, I would think. But yeah, so, but once again, that was kind of one that came together, you know, probably in a more rushed way without that time to develop that, at, at least from my perspective of joining that one, without having any discussion around any of that sort of like, yeah, we all, I think there was an element of we all got on, right, as as people to a certain extent. But I don't recall that we ever had, you know, that big discussion of how, how does this business grow? What do we need to do? Do we agree with the strategy? Blah, 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 blah. It was just kind of like, let's let's do this business and throw it out there and see what the hell happens. And then as we went on with it, it turned out that we each, you know, had different ideas and there was no sort of way to find commonality there. So once again. Yeah, know, I think there's which- a there's a lot of lessons here that hopefully we can add to the end of like how to structure this. So if you're if you're wondering like step by step, here's all the stuff I should think about, listen to these stories so that you get an idea of what what to watch out for. But at the end we're gonna walk through, you know, here have all of these things in place and you'll hear some commonalities from this story. And I think for that one, it's you know, you can't have that many people all trying to make decisions together. You just can't. Like, and you have to share a vision. You have to all be on the same page. Absolutely. Yep. So I don't know if you want me to go into some more horror stories or 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 where you'd like to go here, John. I'm, I'm happy to share some. I, I want to try to be like careful. I guess. I, like, I'm not trying to be rude to any people I'm, I'm talking about here, but like some of these that I've been part of. You know, I learned some hard lessons through these partnerships that I'm glad I learned them, but I hope through me sharing some stories today, like prevent some other people from going through that. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, I think you've probably got a few, a few unique ones there and and you've done it a few more times than I have. I mean, I've definitely had a few that didn't work out, which were from earlier in my entrepreneurial journey and, and literally, you know, the reason, the reason that those didn't work out was, I mean, were quite simple is it was just there was no time put into actually discovering if the, the the other person was the right person, like the right fit for me from a just a, a general perspective. Like it was literally like one day we happened to talk to each other and we're like, let's start a business together. And it didn't work out because it turned out that we didn't like each other. And the other one was I went into it with the idea of it, the primary motivator being that I would have to do less to grow a business. And that just wasn't enough. Because once again, it turned out that there were just some some differences there that made, you know, having a partnership in an ongoing sense not viable. So that's why I say uh, I really don't think that can be your primary motivator. But well, anyway, I'm, yeah, you, you tell us tell us some of your. <laughs> I'm going to try to be as careful as I can here. Like I, I don't want to be I don't want to be rude. Some people will put put two and two together. I don't I don't need to name names here either. I will name one, uh, which I've named on the show before, but I won't name any other. Like so in the beginning, I had built a business. Actually, I bought it. If you know my story, I, I bought my first business from a guy who was sick in the forums because he had suppliers on board that I needed to get on board. Long story short, I ended up having to call suppliers anyway. So I'm going- all right, I'm gonna cut it right there. If you want to hear all those juicy stories. Go to patreon.com slash dropship podcast. You can listen to this episode absolutely free, as well as the other 20 some episodes that we've done already. Binge on them, enjoy them. And when a new episode comes out, you will only be charged when we put one out, which is again, every other week or so. And it's just $5 per episode. We appreciate your support. Again, check out all the old stuff for free. Patreon.com forward slash dropship podcast. And we hope you stick around and check out a few new shows with us as well. Thanks for listening to the Dropship Podcast. You can find all the show notes for this episode at dropshippodcast.com. And if you're ready to take the next step in your dropshipping journey, we invite you to join us inside Dropship Breakthrough, where John and I will walk you through step-by-step in starting your own high-ticket dropshipping e-commerce business. But that's not all. Dropship Breakthrough will also teach you everything you'll need to know to grow your business and take it to the next level. So head over to dropshipbreakthrough.com and sign up for our free training that will help you take the first steps towards building and growing your own profitable high-ticket dropshipping business.